and someone came up with what SOA actually means. So there was state of the art, one option. Sir Banis Oxley Act, state of Alaska, you betcha. Sexual overdragbar andoening, and Sega of America. And I mean, who here knows what SOA actually means? Stick a hand up if you know this. Right, I mean, a few. And it's, it should be really well known because it's the internet. I mean, you know, service oriented architecture. You put stuff somewhere, you find it. It's like um, you want to buy a pizza, so you call someone and say, where's the best pizza shop? And someone says, I'll put you through. And they put you through and a pizza arrives. Except it's all digital, so it should be really easy to do because there's no pizza. It's just like, you know, a package of data. And pizza shops can come and go any time. And since the internet is all about information and communication, it's a real shame that messaging, which is the, the core of this, is so poorly understood and so poorly made. It's really, really expensive. In most cases, it's mostly proprietary and closed and locked down. There are some open source projects, and mostly they're kind of blech. And there are some protocols, and they're kind of blech. And it really is like the last big, boring, complex, and painful area of computer science. I think we solved databases about 10 years ago, and now everyone can do SQL, and it's, it's a child's play, no problem. So messaging is in that stage of moving from enterprise technology to something that anyone can use. And today, if you can't connect pieces together across the internet, you're an incompetent developer. You can't actually make big applications. This is what our job is. It's connecting pieces in interesting ways. So, I think big companies actually like it to be complex and painful and boring. It's actually in their interest. It keeps away competition. It lets you lock in customers. It lets you charge profits. Consultants love it. You know, big fat books on web services architecture, and you have 55 protocols to learn, and they're all complex, and they're all really huge, and of course it's expensive. But open source doesn't work that way. Open source works by making things simple, and open, and cheap, and reusable, and generic, and, you know, everywhere. It doesn't work by making things complicated. So this is the thing, how do you make things simple? Simplicity is very hard. Um, it's a common idea people have that you start simple and you end up complex. It's actually the other way around. You start complex and if you're very lucky, after years of work, you end up very simple. And look at SQL, it's a good example. You know, SQL systems from the 90s were big, complex. You have Oracle, which is a nightmare. Today it's SQLib. You know, it's a plug-in library which you just, you just call, it just works. That's what technology should do. It takes a long time though. So, messaging is something that every single project invents. And in my company, we do custom projects for a long time, and we find ourselves every time reinventing messaging. There's a factory receiving orders from an SAP system. Well, there's some software that exports orders from SAP and then sends to the factory and then processes them and sends back confirmations. We're doing messaging all the time. And every team does this, I think, and we all do it badly. That's the funny thing. It's a very easy problem to try to explain. The question is very simple. It's, I want piece A to talk to piece B, and piece C, and piece D. That's easy. But actually doing it is very, very hard. Doing it properly is very hard. And it's hard because you've got to get the addressing right. You know, where is piece A, where is piece B? What if they move? What, if, what are they called? You've got to get the queuing right. What if piece B is gone temporarily? What happens to its messages? You know, what if I have several piece Bs? How do they share the work? These things are subtle, and the answers take time to develop. Reliability, transport systems. What protocol do I use? Is it TCP? Is it SCTP? Is it multicast? Is it, you know, what, what, what do I use to connect the pieces at the lower level? So the right answers are hard to get. And in fact, until recently, no one had the right answers. That's my theory. Lots of wrong answers. Big, expensive wrong answers. Fantastic. So a few years ago, um, I think because People got really fed up by this, and by people I mean large companies, users of middleware messaging, uh, actually began to push develop a new standard called AMQP. And AMQP is very interesting, it's worth studying. I think it's the first open standard that actually tries to address the generic problem of messaging. And it's a very generic solution, you could use this for anything almost. It has a general answer to addressing, a general answer to queuing, a general answer to naming pieces, it's, it's portable, it has no no hang-ups about what language to use or what data format, it's blobs move from A to B to C. 
I guess I was the first author of AMQP, so I kind of love it. But it, I think it was really an interesting protocol. And it's been adapt, adopted by, by several companies. There are, I think, five or six implementations now. And they're being used in anger, in real, in large deployments. One of our customers is Dow Jones Company, which now moved their industrial average onto AMQP backbone, which is quite impressive. They're doing something like, I think it's 100,000 messages a second, and that's constant the whole time, full time, on and on and on and on. So they pull in data from, from Reuters, from, from NASDAQ, from Chicago Options Exchange, and it goes through a server which filters it, selects it, and then it gets published out to different clients, which then bring it down. And it computes, amongst other things, these, these, these averages. So you have a protocol designed by users in small IT firms, which is very good. It makes it quite, you know, reasonably, reasonably nice. The website is amqp.org. Website's kind of disappointing, as you'll see. Now, OpenAMQ, which is what this talk is going to be about, but, you know, that's a very small part of the whole thing, is our AMQP server and client. It's, uh, we began making this together with AMQP about four years ago. It's, I would say, industrial quality software, very, you know, serious stuff. It's easy to use, but it's also reasonably painful to build a large build system, multi-threaded, designed for, you know, for big use. But yeah, download, build, compile, run, fairly straightforward. It's fast. Could be much faster, but AMQP has issues there. Um, and it's, it's reliable. Like I say, it runs and runs and runs. And we spent something like three or four years just making that work. Very hard to make reliable software. You know, you get memory leaks, you get little race conditions. If it's multi-threading, it's horribly difficult. But we got that. Um, we have a whole toolkit, in fact. Uh, we had this crazy idea of writing it in C. C is the worst possible language for serious programming. It's really a terrible language. I love it, in fact, but it's really terrible. It's very simple. It's not like Perl. Perl, you, you learn Perl, you write your program, you forget Perl. And you go through this learn and write and forget cycle every time, and it's really painful. C, you remember C. It's very simple. But when you write C, every line of code is really painful to write. You have to write huge amounts of code. Um, I think that the size of OpenAMQ in lines of C code is approaching one million. And that's a lot of code for a small team to maintain. So we use a toolkit, which is a metaprogramming toolkit, which is really funky. Metaprogramming means that you actually write code that then writes code. And what we do is we write code that writes 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 code. It gets really crazy. But it does let us actually produce a lot of code very, very cheaply. Um, the actual, so a million lines of code for, for OpenMQ. The meta code is about 150,000 lines of code. And of that, I think only about 70,000 is really written by hand and half is generated. And then that produces all the C code. Metaprogramming is a way to write very, very large systems which have a, a kind of a, you know, guaranteed level of reliability. When you generate code, you know what's in there. There's still handmade code in there, so there's still issues, of course, but they can be fixed. So that's on www.openamq.org. Now, we, we, we built AMQP for JP Morgan. We then built OpenAMQ for several clients. We delivered that, and then we looked at this for a while, and then we said, this is still too complex. People aren't adopting it. It's look at amqp.org, look, AMQ, look at OpenAMQ, try it. You'll find it too complex. Try to write a client that speaks AMQP. It's a protocol. It's written, it's documented. It takes months. That's not good. I don't like that. Um, for me, the target audience for technology and products isn't the guy sitting in a bank with a year and a half to write a product, you know, to write an application. That's not fun. My target audience are people like me, open source developers who have no time, who want to download, try it, and it works the same day, or else they give up. And for me, if you don't get AMQP and stuff like it, and this way of doing messaging into the hands of you know, developers without a, you know, an enterprise you know, financial system to back them, but just their own time and effort, then it won't work. And we will see the domination of messaging by proprietary products and by really second-class uh, answers. So I've been working with some guys since August on making AMQP simpler, 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 which is quite, quite a fun project. There are other problems with AMQP. The, it has some flaws, but we were still learning when we made this. You know, it's not perfect. Um, we discovered something called REST. Now, REST is fun. 
rest is something which has become very fashionable in the last year or so. But in fact, it's the, it's the underpinning of, of HTTP. It's, it's a very straightforward way 